All right, so the market is still in free fall. Stocks are falling, crypto is still falling, real estate is slowing down and probably about to fall. So in today's video, I wanna share with you exactly how much money I've lost, cause it's a lot. Part of this video was actually inspired by my friend Graham Stephan's video, where he shared how much money he's lost. But I think Graham would really approve of my video because Andre Jake does it better. All right, I definitely took that out of context, but there's a way better way to vanish your money really, really fast. Check this out. Oh boy. This time, it's gonna be different. So in today's video, I wanna give you a portfolio update for transparency's sake across all the things I invest in, from my stock portfolio, my crypto portfolio, my NFTs, and my real estate. Because as nice as winning is, losing is just as equally an important part of the journey of investing. And now more than ever, it's important to share those losses because we live in a time when everyone makes it seem like it's easy to day trade their way to millions and how everyone is a Bitcoin millionaire and how people are driving Lamborghinis at the age of 15. And I just don't think that's realistic because sometimes you'll win, sometimes you'll lose, but on average, over a 20 year rolling period, the stock market has historically always made money. And sometimes it's nice to be reminded that we're in this mess together. Here's a stock market fun fact, for example. Between July 1926 and April 2022, the stock market has averaged 9.95% per year. The cumulative return, or the total return of the market, was 885,084%. So even if you factored inflation into these numbers, you would still be way, way ahead. And that's because over the last 96 years, the stock market dropped 15 times when it went into a bear market, or a drop of 20% or more. Now, we have already done that. The S&P 500 did that on May 20th, so the clock has already started. So here's how you can think about this, because the time that it took for the market to reach the bottom was 264 trading days. So we still have a ways to go this year if we were to take historical averages into account. But when the market went all the way down, on average, we dropped negative 34.8%. So far, we're down roughly 18%, maybe 20% of the time of watching this video. But the time that it took to recover from those losses was exactly 567 trading days on average. So sure, at some points throughout history, the market has lost people a lot of money. But if you zoom out and you look at the market as a whole across those 20 year rolling periods, there has never been a time where the market has lost people money. Here's another fun fact. After those 20% declines, after those bear markets, the cumulative return five years after those drops, the market returned 69.9% on average. So the lesson is that if you do nothing and you're patient, the market will reward you. So hopefully five years from now, in the year 2027, we'll look back at this moment and say, I'm glad I did nothing and I stayed invested because now I'm sitting pretty with my 70% gains. So now more than ever, when we're talking about the possibility of this crazy recession, I wanna share with you those losses because I'm right there with you and we're all in this together and that's what I have to keep telling myself to sleep well at night. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay because a wise man once said, roll number one, never lose money. Roll number two, <laughs> don't forget about roll number one when a company does well, the stock eventually follows. So uh, <laughs> smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, you know what I'm saying? All right, so let's talk about the stock market because so far this year, the S&P 500 is down roughly 18 and a half percent. And one of my favorite things to do is to compare how well my stock portfolio did against the S&P 500. So here it is. This is my stock portfolio. Now, a quick preface, I started investing in 2014 and I picked the dividend income strategy. So I used to buy individual stocks that had a dividend yield somewhere around the 4%. Now, as I started to make more money with YouTube, I climbed up the tax bracket and I started to pay more in taxes. So I shifted my investing strategy away from buying individual stocks and more to buying broad market index funds, specifically stocks like VTI and VOO. And that's because because they have a lower dividend yield. So I get to collect less in income, but I get to keep more in equity invested. So that money gets to work harder for me because there's more money. If I was to take it as an income, I would pay more in taxes and keep less for myself. But that's just my personal situation. Now that's why as of right now, 61% of my portfolio are individual stocks and roughly 39% are those ETFs. My goal right now is to buy more of these ETFs to grow my ETF pie to be a little bit bigger. But what's funny is that right now in this economy where everyone is afraid of a recession, it's 
it's the dividend style of those individual stocks that I've been buying that are doing much, much better. So I'm kind of glad that I have a hybrid model to rely on. In fact, I just recently heard a quote that I really liked and it goes like this, equity comes, equity goes, but cash always flows. And the older I get, the more I realize that investing is so personal. It's not just about the total market return, because if that's the case, the S&P 500, this side is actually much more profitable on a long-term scale. But in times like these, if you were trying to retire, then you don't wanna be selling off equity of the S&P 500 at a 20% loss because it's costing you even more to fund your retirement. It's kind of interesting. It really depends on your personality and your goals. So anyway, let me show you my stock portfolio and compare that against the S&P 500 to see how well I did, or in this case, didn't do. So here it is. Now, I'm using Robinhood right now, which for whatever reason still to this day does not show us something called YTD, the year to date performance. This measures from January 1st at the beginning of the year to whatever time period you're looking to. Even though Robinhood has all these different time periods and you could see the one year marker, the one year on Robinhood is not a true YTD. The one year on Robinhood is what's called a rolling year. It looks back exactly 365 days from when you're looking. And that's not what we want. We want to measure exactly from January 1st of this year. And here's how you can calculate this yourself manually if you're a Robinhood user like me. It has a little bit of math involved, but I promise it's super simple. So all you have to do is look at the starting value of your portfolio and subtract it from the current value and divide it by the starting value multiplied by 100. Sounds complicated, but here's what it looks like. So my starting value at the beginning of this year was on January 3rd, that's the closest I can get with my fat finger, is six. $646,469. Now I'm gonna subtract that from the current value of the portfolio today, which is $536,102. Now, I already did the math ahead of time. I'm not like a math whiz, because my videos are totally not scripted. Uh, that gives me a total value of negative $110,366.88. So I'm gonna take that number and divide it by the starting value on January 3rd, which was $646,469 to get negative 0.1707. At this point, I can multiply this number by 100 to give me the final result, or an even easier way is to move the decimal point over two places to the right to get negative 17%. So that's my year to date performance. Now a normal brokerage or a normal app will give you this year to date performance automatically, but I had to do this myself. Now in comparison to the stock market, which is VOO, that has lost 18 and a half percent. So I'm super close. I'm basically in line, but here's really the biggest mistake I've made this year. I didn't stick to what I understood. For example, I understand dividend stocks. You buy them and they pay you a passive income. They give you a dividend yield. That's great. I also understand broad market index funds. You buy them, you dollar cost average into them, and the idea is that 20 years from now, they're gonna be worth more than they were 20 years ago. Super simple. What I don't understand are growth stocks. I have no idea which way they're gonna move. They can go up one day, they can go down the next, and some of these companies are not even gonna be around anymore. So I wish I had just stuck to it because I was so excited to show you how much better my portfolio did than the stock market, but now I can't because I bought two stocks that changed everything. Coinbase, which is down 84% or $60,000, and Corsair Gaming, which I bought on a whim, which is down $17,000 or close to 53%. Now across just two stocks, I have lost $77,000. So if I didn't buy those two stocks, there's a good chance that my portfolio would have been down substantially less and I would have looked a lot smarter right now because I was so excited to show you just how awesome index funds are and how awesome dividends are, but I didn't do that, so instead, here we are. <laughs> So that's my stock portfolio. Now let's talk about crypto. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. All right, so you know how everyone is losing money in the markets right now? Well, get this. Americans lost $6.9 billion to online crime in 2021, far outpacing home burglaries. Yet we continue to invest our money into physical protection like security cameras and smart doorbells, leaving ourselves completely vulnerable to digital crimes. So now more than ever, as we enter into a potential recession, it's important to protect ourselves and I I think I found the solution. Aura. Aura is an all-in-one intelligent safety service that proactively protects you and your family from digital crime. With this one service, you get everything from identity theft protection, password management, financial fraud detection. It's also a VPN that allows you to safely and privately browse the web, and it monitors the dark web for any information that might expose your emails, your passwords, and social security numbers. They also monitor all three credit bureaus to make sure no one's trying to access your credit to get a loan in your name. They can instantly lock your Experian credit 
credit file, they can monitor your credit card transactions, and they have a 24-7 US-based customer support team, and they do all of that all in one place. So I tried them out for myself, and I found that there were dozens of websites that had my personal information leaked, and at least three sensitive pieces of info on the dark web, which I asked them to opt me out of. But they also include a $1 million identity theft insurance with every single plan. But the best part is that if you sign up for a free trial today, you'll be able to check if your data was already part of a data breach. So try it free for two weeks when you go to Aura.com forward slash Andre and protect yourself today. Go check them out. They're amazing. Thank you, Aura, for sponsoring this part of the video. Now let's get back to it. Check this out. At the peak, my crypto portfolio was worth $1.16 million. Not bad. Times were good, interest rates were low, Papa Powell was not scaring us with a recession and worries of stagflation, so times have definitely changed. But my portfolio has always been about Bitcoin and Ethereum. I've been buying them since 2014, but not really heavily until 2020. And my third biggest position was what I called my moonshot. It was something that I essentially gambled no more than maybe 5% of my net worth at the time, because it could 10X, it could 20X, I figured, or it could lose 90% of its value, which is exactly what it ended up doing. I've made a lot of videos about Omi. I still still have the position, but I've never been paid to promote them. I've never been paid to talk about them. It's just something that I personally enjoyed. I've also never received anything for free from them either. Just wanted to set the record straight. Today, my portfolio is worth $500,000. Pretty crazy. It's down over 50%. To be fair, this does not include OMI and all the other stuff, which is about $110,000. So altogether, the net value of my crypto portfolio today is something like $610,000. So if you take that and subtract it from its all-time high of one point one six million, you get a total of $550,000. And if you add the losses in crypto to my stock losses of $110,000, you get $660,000 of losses. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you any encouraging historical facts about crypto because it hasn't been around long enough. So I can't say in 1926, Bitcoin, Bitcoin was rat poison, but today it's, a, it's the elixir of life. But I will say with relative confidence that the reason Bitcoin never reached $100,000 a coin by now is because we never got the spot ETF. So the trillions of dollars that were all invested in index funds never really flowed into crypto yet. And our regulators are still dragging their feet. And ever since the collapse of Terra Luna, we're afraid of how they're gonna respond with regulating those stable coins. But I will say that five years from now, it's my belief that Bitcoin will be closer to $500,000 a coin than it will be to zero. But that's just my perspective and that's crypto. Now let me share with you something even crazier, which are NFTs. Please remember Remember that NFTs are not a reliable investment and retirement strategy. This is only for fun and educational and entertainment purposes only. So here it is. This is the total vault value of my NFTs at the peak, $312,000, which is pretty crazy. Also, it's not technically dollars, it's gems, which is an in-game currency of the app, which you can't convert to dollars yet. You'll be able to hopefully at some point. I don't know when, but let's pretend like I can for now, because right now, the value of the portfolio is $65,000. Now, that's a huge loss. That's almost a quarter million dollars. Luckily, I did not invest a quarter million dollars. I did not invest $300,000. Right now, I'm about at break even. Now, the market could go much lower from this point on, but like I said, I go out of my way to include these disclaimers that this is extremely speculative and very volatile. The only NFT project I'm still up on is the Doodles project. That's the only one that has still made me money. Now, that was NFTs and crypto. Very speculative. Now let me show you my real estate portfolio. So far, the only thing that has really held up in value this year is my real estate portfolio, which fortunately, my rental home that I bought in February of this year has gone up $100,000, and my primary residence, which is the house I live in now, has gone up roughly $400,000 after the remodel. So altogether, it's about half a million dollars, but when you add in the increase to the interest rates, and of course the inventory, which has already started to happen, then the real estate market will start to soften, and we're seeing that already. Personally, I'm actually really excited for this to happen because I feel like real estate has been overvalued for such a long time, and I think it'll be a great buying opportunity, especially for first-time home buyers. So altogether, my losses were $910,000, but if you add in the price appreciation of real estate into that, then net, all in all, my year-to-date performance is $410,000 in losses. Now, this does not include alternative assets and collectibles, but that's why they say it's important to diversify and never put all your eggs in one basket because it's a lot more fun to watch lots of baskets on fire instead of just one. It's a bigger bonfire. Just kidding. 
That's why it's important to buy not only stocks, but also some crypto and also some real estate, because hopefully they won't all move in the same direction. Otherwise, those losses could be a lot worse. So as always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Go grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this link right here. Go grab your free stocks. Links are down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet linked down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. Bye-bye.